Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm sort of playing around with volumes. Um, I listened to one of my podcasts the other day and I thought, well, there's, a bit, there's a bit of white noise on there. Come, I mean, obviously that's coming from the iPad, I imagine. And I listened on my um, Mac laptop, which isn't very good anyway. So um, maybe maybe I just imagined it. But anyway, I've I've just experimented a little bit. So I've turned it up today and I've moved further away. So you won't hear the lashing of my tongue on the on the uh, when I'm rude about people. <laughs> no, we're on the roof of my mouth. Anyway, very productive day. I've completely and utterly got into this groove of not spending any money, but waking up and writing a chapter of immersion. Today's chapter, I remember writing it um, and it's lost in, in the abyss of, you know, my my stress and anxiety. I don't know where it's gone. I've obviously a- accidentally deleted it at some point. Um, so I had, to re- I had to write it again from scratch, scratch. But I've become a much better writer in the three years that I've been writing. Why? Well, I mean, at least I think I have. Um, I'm much more patient about the development of a sentence, much more patient. So I don't mind stopping and going over it a few times. And I don't mind crossing, you know, er erasing bits that don't work. So I've become slightly fearless, which is a really good thing. I think when I first started writing novels rather than poetry, I used to labour intensely over the words. And then I would... I would like a construction of something, the syntax or whatever, and then I wouldn't want to get rid of it if it didn't work. Um, and you do this with music as well. It's very easy to do that with music. Keep keep the beautiful bit in that you did really well. <laughs> but if it's if it's not getting the message across, unfortunately, you have to be really vicious and just say, no, nope, you're gone, you're out, you're fired. Um, why else have I become better? Because practice makes perfect. And if you're writing every day, and I always research first thing to write my introductory paragraph. I didn't know half the things I know now that I researched about emotions and AI, um, philosophy, um, you know, questions about humanity that have always grumbled in the background, but I've never had to write them down. Now I'm finding I have to write them down. And to write them down, I need to go to... Um, the the Google internet machine, you know, and I find because Google gives you what you want, it started giving me study papers readily. So I'm reading, I can easily go down a rabbit hole now that isn't AliExpress or Temu. I go down a rabbit hole that is, um, you know, the University of, <laughs> of Sussex or something, you know, and you're reading all this stuff and you're like, wow, wow. And it really is wow fact. I go, oh my God, how, I need to put this in a picture, you know. I need to write a sentence that, um, you know, that, that is this idea in a sentence or five, you know. And it's, it's a total pleasure. But you become very good because you're reading all the time. You're constantly reading constructed, sensible sentences. You know, you're not reading texts. You're not reading Facebook slogans or memes. You're reading proper stuff and you you get really good. You become more linguistically skilled. Um, So, yes, um, the, the looking back on some of the artwork now, I'm on chapter 18 today. Um, so it's only 18 chapters. I keep having to go back and redo bits. And currently I'm redoing the artworks. So, I mean, I'm very fond of these artworks because they they were developed when I first started using AI, when all of the AI um, machines that are on, you know, that are available to us were very new. And some of them I absolutely love, but others, you know, really, you can really see. And I think the problem comes with using AI is when you can see all the mistakes so I need to go back and rectify them all. Plus, I'm putting all the posters on Saatchi. So I'm selling them. All the illustrations from Immersion are going to be available as open edition prints in a frame, beautifully presented at Saatchi.com. 
And I'm very excited about this. So I've got at least 18 to do. Well, I, actually, I got one up today. I got Let's Go Swimming up today. And I got yesterday's one up, Empathy. So those two are up. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But there's, so there's still 16 more to do. And I'm going to probably finish this book by the end of the week. If I keep going at this rate, there are only about three more chapters to do. Um, possibly four no I think three actually so that's very exciting isn't it to be finished volume one. Oh my goodness me I've been thinking about the ending guys and I'm thinking I might change it I might do something shocking at the end <laughs> because I've learned so much I've learned so much about AI and when I when I first started exploring AI as an artist myself as a as an intellectual artistic project that's what it was for me you remember it's hello darling I was writing I mean it's a musical the the, the book of immersion is a musical and I was really excited by this prospect that I could instruct something in these abstract weird ideas and it would make all these mistakes and it would sound really exciting but of course now I just I hate AI <laughs> I just don't, I don't trust it you know, it's a big con. And so now I'm thinking in my book, well, you know, I have I have a different motive. <laughs> so the, when I started the book, I wanted everybody to, um, well, I guess, love AI and be, um, you know, be positive about it. And now I just think AI is the enemy. <laughs> so I might do something shocking at the end of the book, at the end of this volume. It's not the end of the book. Um, so I have to find out anyway. So, yeah, and going back to art, actually, and using AI. So I have I paid for my AI for a month, got a whole load of artworks. I've got hundreds and hundreds of artworks, and I, I'm going to be using them all. So I don't need AI anymore, um, per se. It's sort of done its job now. And I've got some beautiful starting points. So what I've decided to do is, is you know, on my show at the art the academy of arts i'm going to really focus on are you starting how to use all of this software this wonderful software that's open to us really i i ai is a very small part of what i do most of what i do is using other software like photoshop procreate um or a lot so i mean i i can get through five pieces of software to get the design that i like and then finish it all off, you know, with my... What's the matter? What's up? What do you want? I don't know if he wants cuddles or <laughs> tummy rubs. I'm not sure. Yes, there we go. It's getting a head rub. Um, I've completely lost my thread now. Uh, yes, so I, I... Sometimes I will, you know, do all sorts of really strange things. Because if my hand can't do something... And my hand can draw, but maybe I want something weird that a machine can do. Like, maybe I want something to look like a collage, you know? Mm. Yes, darling, I'm talking to the people on the radio. M maybe I like that um, sharp cutout feel w that you get when you, when you use um, photo collage, especially low-budget ones. I, I like that, you see. So I might do something like that on Be Funky. And then I might take it in... So I might start with an AI image, take it into Be Funky, cut it up, chop it up, put some protest words on it or something, download it, take it into my Procreate, draw on top of it, um, and then take it into another bit of software to enlarge it, and then another bit of so software so I can use digital paint brushes that look like oil paints. You know, and, and by this time I'm sort of thinking, OK, well, I, do you know what? I've nearly, I've nearly finished. I'm getting what I want. And it occurred to me, actually, that lots of people, especially people who are new to art, don't realise that, you know, you, you've got all this tech available to you, all this material that, you know, you can find and utilise, but you can make it your own. You can really make it your own. You can do something quite radical if you're courageous enough to just try all the different tech that, that you have at your disposal. And this happens with music as well, you know, with with my music. I use as much tech as possible. 
in my music. Um, and I'm all for it, guys. I'm all for it. At some level, there's creativity. And I think when, you, when you're a writer, you know, I mean, I'd never use AI for my, for my book. I, I wouldn't insult myself. Because I, I do think using AI for literature is insulting. Because what you see, you see people on Twitter who are writing poems. And I have written a couple of poems, but I've I've been highly amused by them. Well, my AI has, rather. You know, I've said to it, do something. And I, and I was... The Quilmatic Bardinator was totally... Um, totally AI. But it was comedy, you see. Because it, it's comedic. AI is very good at comedy. It's hilarious, actually, because it's stupid. So I think for comedy, comedy factor, you can get quite a lot out of it. And that's the same with the some of the art, especially the early art when it would have arms coming out of heads and all sorts of crazy things. I mean, I loved all that. I thought it was superb. But it's comedy value. It's not intellectual value, is it? It's comedic. It's um, satire almost. Um, it's quirky, that sort of thing. Uh, and AI is very good at that. You know, put a dog's head on top of an elephant's body. AI can do all of that quickly and well. It's funny. You can make posters with that. Ha ha. Or, or greetings cards, you know. Ha ha, look at that. Let's get that for our, for mum's birthday. She'll be highly amused by that. See what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, AI has its place. But anyway, the, getting back to this fact that I use lots and lots of different tech, and hardware and software at my disposal. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm actually quite skilled at it now. In fact, I'm very skilled at it. And, you know, creating my brand is, has been the hardest thing that I've ever done. But I, I do feel that it's starting to, you know, make... I had a thousand, thousand hits on my YouTube yesterday. A thousand. Just on my podcasts. I mean, admittedly, it's robots, probably. It's probably all robots. But, you know, it still means... E even if the robots are noticing you, it means you're being noticed. They're probably stripping your data. <laughs> They're probably sharing your links. Because if you if you go into some of my or or your own you know Google your own name or your own website, you can see what other people are doing with your links, your website, and mine are all over the world. On these very strange sites, I know nothing about. This is what the robots are doing. You know the the all the trillions and trillions of links that are available. They're searching for them. And they're organising them. They're putting them in lists. I mean, most of the internet is about a list, a list of information that you that somebody can easily access. That's most of it. It's like ninety nine point nine percent of it, uh, and the rest is just uh, you know um, salacious entertainment. Uh, however, I'm you know I'm I'm not completely slagging off the internet because I'm you know we need it desperately because. You know, some of us can't get out to go to the bloody library anymore. Some of us don't have libraries in our towns and villages anymore. Um, and and libraries had a lot to answer for chopping down all those trees. Um, although I think uh, probably databases have a, a lot to answer for, don't they? I heard that Microsoft were thinking of going under the ocean and building huge data farms. And... I is it called a data farm? No, just a data, a, you know, a place where they store the data. Every time you send a, a, a text message, it has to go to one of these places and then get sent out again. And I just think, don't go onto the ocean, please. And talking of which, um, today's episode, Immersion uh, Strata 18, is about water and swimming. Um, and it's got a lovely poem on there that I wrote a while ago and uh, I did a single from it but deleted the, took, took the single down because I didn't like it my singing was really weak it was when before I learnt to open my throat and do, do it with some um, affirmation <laughs> so um, or assertion anyway um, tailtellerclub.com and estelamare.blogspot.com episode is out now <laughs>